Okay, I think for this video, I'm gonna take my lav mic. You had it like behind your ear and you let it dangle. Like, does that give it better sound? How's this sound? What happens if you just like, I don't know, did arm audio? Does this, does this drive you mental if I just put this on the outside? Like if I leave it on the outside of my shirt, you guys are like, oh, I just can't focus anymore. The lav mic is out. It's on his shirt. I just, the, oh. all this stuff is completely unrelated to the fact that we're talking about uh, changing the coloring within your videos, utilizing Lumetri curves. Now, for those of you who have not played around with Lumetri curves in the latest update of Adobe Premiere Pro CC, Oh, it's amazing. It's so, it's such a great tool. And I did not realize how powerful it was and still is until I started like tweaking around some lighting. So I'm gonna take you guys through the process of using these and how they can completely change the game when it comes to lighting. Okay, so open up Premiere Pro. Now again, this has to be the latest version of Adobe Premiere. So if you guys have not updated uh, your application, go into uh, Adobe Creative Cloud and the sort of drop down menu and update Premiere Pro to the latest version of CC, or at least the ver like the 29 version. Uh, and that way you'll actually be able to get all these fun little functions in Lumetri Color, which we'll start playing around with in a second. So I've sort of hand selected a couple shots for you guys to uh, see this effect played out. I've done one really dark one, so you'll see sort of a very subtle variation of it. Now this is a shot from a music video that I shot last year called Alive. Uh, if you're interested in taking a look at it, there'll be a link in the blog post. Uh, this is also two other shots from the music video. Uh, I have this fireworks shot, which I want to show you how we can kind of just change the subtle color of uh, light in the background. But then I've also given you guys an example of like a talk to head part. So this is a video shot in my basement, and I'm going to show you how we can sort of alter this green. And then finally, we're going to do a full color grade madness on uh, on my next tutorial on slow motion. You guys get a bit of a sneak peek. Look at that. It's so exciting. Let's do the first Lumetri effect, which will be from the music video Alive. So what you want to do is go over into your Lumetri section. Um, I have my effects panel open. I love editing um, with uh, in the effects workspace. Um, and what, would, and what it does is just sort of has your effects, your essential graphics, essential sound, and then Lumetri Color. Basically, just open up your Lumetri Color, scroll all the way down, and open up the Curves tab. Okay, so the first thing we're going to play around with is Hue versus Saturation, which basically, if we grab our little favorite eyedropper tool, and we're just going to click it on that green tinge of that light. Now, I really want it to affect a lot of it, so what I'm going to do is just open up these parameters uh, a lot wider. So therefore, it's sort of selecting a wide range of color within that light. And now if you just watch, just take a look in the frame on the left, as I play around with the dial here, if I crank up the saturation, look at that, you can almost go into like a neon green. Or if I really want to just take the power out of it and just suck all the life out, I can drag the saturation right down. It almost just mutes the color completely. So this can come really in handy if you're really playing with a certain color palette. And let's say, for example, prime example, these red lights over here in the back are sort of just killing the vibe. It's taken away from it. So all I got to do is click on this eyedropper tool, select that sort of red tone. And now if I just bring this down, I can take away the saturation completely. So therefore, my audience isn't getting distracted by those bright, prominent red colors that were coming over here. It's a lot more muted. So this is where this function can come really into handy. Let's move on to the next shot, which this one is a lot more fun and exciting, and it's just a shot of fireworks exploding. So what I'm going to do now is I want to I want to change the color of the fireworks. This is where we can have a little bit of fun. So right now the fireworks are sort of like a muted orange. So again, what we're going to do is actually we're going to scroll down from the saturation. Now we're going to play around with the hue. This is where it gets super fun. We'll click onto that. It's again going to highlight that those orange tones. And what I can do now is just play around with the colors. I can make them green fireworks if I want by just scrolling all the way down. Maybe they got a really cool funky batch and boom. And now it's just got like some sort of weird music video -y vibe, but that feels quite unnatural. So what I can do is I can just bring it back to its original color. Again, the closer you stay to the center line here, the more the authentic original color will be there. And you can just kind of give it maybe a bit of a boost. Maybe I want it to be a little bit more red. Again, if we go all the way up, it gets super dramatic and just not the flavor that I want. But if I just 
enhance it a little bit, essentially, that's not detracting from any of the other colors and really just stealing from the, the shot of those fireworks. If you're using something more like a texture light in the background to give your shot a bit more flavor, like for me, I used a green light in the back to sort of add a bit of depth to my shot. But for example, let's say it's not fitting your flow. It's not fitting your color palette. What you can do is literally just click the little eyedropper tool again, select it, and now I can radically change. And again, we're gonna open up these parameters again just a little bit. I can radically change the color of that green. So maybe I want it to be more of a teal color rather than a green. Boom, well now it's like a blue, like look at that. A complete change and it's not affecting any of my skin tones, it's not affecting anything else because essentially it is selecting that very prominent green. So again, the more drastic we sort of get with this, the lower the quality is gonna happen. Again, we're sort of seeing a little bit of pixelation and that's also because this isn't the raw video file, this is a pre-exported one. So the higher your res, uh, the, the higher your res and the better your color space, the easier it will be to create this effect. But look at that, like I can completely change the color of those lights to like a, a violet. I can go all the way into like a nice blue or I can sort of stay in the same zone of the green. So again, if your lighting is not exactly the way you want it, maybe your white balance was slightly off or um, your lighting technician didn't do their job correctly, um, you can make these minimal changes and this can actually save a lot of time on set so that way you're not constantly trying to fix the lighting. You can make tiny adjustments. Now I know you're saying you're like, Zach, what do these ones do? You haven't talked about these. Let's play around with them. So let's do uh, Hue versus Luma. So again, we selected the green and let's play around with the parameters. Essentially, it can make it brighter or darker. Again, Luma makes a lot of sense. But as you can see, there's a lot of um, pixelation starting to show. Again, that's because this is an exported video clip. It's not the raw file. So the better your res, the better your color space, the easier this will be to uh, eliminate. But anyway, as an example piece, you can really make that punch up or potentially you don't like the green. You don't like your little color in the back. You can eliminate it. This is an effect that uh, tamper with too much, you really start to get a lot of like pixelation within your shot. So I don't really play around with this too much, but uh, for some it's pretty handy because let's say your skin tones, um, let's just click onto this, might be a little too dark. What I can do is just give them a little bit of a punch. So if we look at my face here, it's gonna punch me in the face slightly. So I can go from like what it was regularly and then just give me just a little bit of a boom. I don't like the look of that, but it's it's an example of how powerful this tool is. So literally, I can just eye drop, boom, click, face punch. Now, so that this video doesn't ramble on to being uh, two hours long, I'm only gonna show you the first three options, which is the hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, and hue versus luma. There are some other really great tutorials out there that can kind of show you the functions of the luma versus saturation and the saturation versus saturation. Just let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see, and I'll try and include it within the blog post that I've created. And finally, let's go into this shot from my next premium beat video, uh, one on slow motion. And I just put on a very quick LUT. And as you can tell, it's not really looking the colors that I want. Things are a little off. Um, so what you can do quickly is you don't even have to change the color of the lighting. You can change the color of, let's say, my jacket. My jacket isn't the blue that I was wanting to go for. So again, I'll go into hue versus hue. Boom, click on a little eyedropper, press into my shirt and I can just now change the tint or tinge of my jacket. So I can make it a super tealy. I can make my jacket freaking green. Wow. I'm gonna go back into the authentic color and just give it just a tiny little bit of a tealishness. So now it's looking a little bit more in the range of what I wanted. Now my skin tones might be a little bit too much in the magenta area. So again, magic wand tool, click onto my skin. And I can just sort of adjust this. I can make myself a uh, Noompa Loompa if I want, or I can just give it a little less magenta. Anyway, so boom, there you guys go. There you guys have it. There's a couple quick different ways on how you can change cinematic shots within, let's say, your movie with like just very subtle colors, like the lights in the background, or you can completely change the look of like fireworks or you can change the way your lighting is and even all the way to your wardrobe. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this gives you some insight. Um, but let me know if this video helped you out with the styles you can do. I've been able to use just this simple method to radically change the flavor of certain shots and vibes to give it uh, different cinematic looks. So 
for example, let's say your, your lookup tables aren't giving you the specific look that you want, apply a lookup table, apply a LUT, and then adjust these uh, curves and it can give you the specific look that you're really trying to achieve with the coloring. If you like the music included in this or you like the content that I'm babbling on about and want to take a look at some more content, you guys can check out premiumbeat.com. There's a long list of other blog posts as well as incredible music like the track that you're hearing right now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking your time to see this. Thanks for coping with the whole lav mic situation. Um, I'll see you guys in another video. Keep making some great stuff. Bye-bye.